Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Fortunately, this Psalm is number 5 in both translations, so let's take a look at what it says. Unto the end, for her that obtaineth the inheritance. The Psalm of David. As with the last psalm, we seem to have a title and description here. Give ear, O Lord, to my words. Understand my cry. Give ear is another way of saying listen, of course. Hearken to the voice of my prayer, O my King and my God. David, who is a king himself, acknowledges that God is a king even over him. For to thee will I pray, O Lord. In the morning thou shalt hear my voice. David does morning prayers, a good habit to get into. In the morning I will stand before thee, and will see, because thou art not a God that willest iniquity. David anticipates the actions of God, and waits to see what he'll do against evil. Neither shall the wicked dwell near thee, nor shall the unjust abide before thy eyes. God is the ultimate source of all goodness, and so evil shrinks in his presence, and those who cling to evil repel themselves away from God, like fire being driven back by spraying water. Thou hatest all the workers of iniquity. Thou wilt destroy all that speak a lie. The bloody and the deceitful man the Lord will abhor. Not that God actually has true hatred of anyone. He doesn't have the desire for more evil to happen to evildoers, but rather he hates that they do evil and will allow bad things to happen to them, both in the hopes that they might change and because of his justice. This doesn't make God any less loving since his hatred is restricted to the evil itself, which is not a thing as such. Evil is only a lack of goodness which should be present. So hating evil doesn't prevent God from being all-loving. But as for me, in the multitude of thy mercy, I will come into thy house, I will worship towards thy holy temple in thy fear. Again, phrased oddly, David is not saying that God is afraid, but that his own fear of offending God will motivate him in worship. He also says that God is merciful in many ways, which means that his fear isn't based on some unwillingness on the part of God to forgive, but only because he doesn't want to displease God, and is afraid of sinning because of that. Conduct me, O Lord, in thy justice. Because of my enemies, direct my way in thy sight. David prays to be guided by God in escaping from his enemies, even when they watch him closely. For there is no truth in their mouth, their heart is vain. The enemies of David are called out for their deceit and unwillingness to take God seriously. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They dealt deceitfully with their tongues. Judge them, O God. A sepulchre is a grave. Opening a grave causes a horrible stench of rotting flesh to come out. David is comparing the lies of deceivers with the disgusting smell of a rotting corpse. Let them fall from their devices. According to the multitude of their wickedness, cast them out, for they have provoked thee, O Lord. Evildoers come up with many clever means, strategies, machines, and social organizations in order to try to protect themselves from justice. David prays that because of their evil, those will all fail them. But let all them be glad that hope in thee. Those who put their hope in God will have reasons to be happy when the final judgment frees them from the domination of evil people forever. They shall rejoice forever, and thou shalt dwell in them. God's goodness isn't merely given to us like a Christmas present. It can enter into our hearts and give us the strength to do good things as well. And all they that love thy name shall glory in thee, for thou wilt bless the just. People who seek to do what's right receive special blessings from God, which will persist in heaven. O Lord, thou hast crowned us as with a shield of thy good will. The metaphors seem to be mixed here. Being crowned with a shield would probably really hurt. However, this doesn't refer to a literal shield or a literal crown, but only that God will give to the just great honor, the crown, and that honor will also protect them, the shield, through his good will. 
So, this is mainly a psalm about pleading for liberation from evildoers, framed in the context of a humble appeal to God through devotion to prayer and faithfulness, and it ends with a statement of faith that God will give justice to those who need it. Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.